You know, when you think about things, I am just like you. I too come to YouTube to be inspired when I'm getting ready to make some new crafts, especially right now because we're getting into fall and this is when I really truly enjoy making a lot of new things for my home. Unfortunately, my brain is not an endless like encyclopedia of ideas. No, I have to be inspired too. Really, I do. And I really enjoy coming and watching videos on YouTube just as much as I enjoy making videos for YouTube. But I do like to come and watch my favorite YouTube crafters like Whiskey and Wit, Liz Fenwick, Crafts by Caitlin, Canterbury Cottage, Bargain Bethany, and I mean, the list goes on and on. And today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite YouTube crafters DIYs and show you how they've inspired me to make my own DIYs. It all just goes away. Things are to say. Oh, baby. Hello, my happy crafty friends. It's me, Lisa, the DIY diva. And like I said in the beginning, I have been really busy crafting and you might be wondering where does some of the inspiration come from, from the crafts that I make. Some of the crafts that I make, I totally come up with on my own, but like other crafters, I've been inspired by different people or different crafts that I've seen, especially here on YouTube. I've wanted to share with you some of the different crafters that I've been inspired by. And then I create my own crafts. And of course, Dollar Tree has a lot of different items that crafters like to use. So of course there are going to be similarities between different crafts. But today I wanted to share with you seven different YouTube channels that I really enjoy going to. And I've recently watched their videos where they have been creating a lot of really fun and creative fall crafts and decor using things they've gotten at Dollar Tree. I love Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure you do too because you're watching this video. All right, so let's get into the craft. So the first craft YouTube channel that I really enjoy watching is Liz Fenwick. She has been around for so long and she has so many different DIY projects. And she recently uploaded a video where she was showing how she does paint pour and she did it on pumpkins. And I thought that would be kind of a fun project. I've done paint pours before. I did it on a Dollar Tree pumpkin, like the sign. And I really liked how that turned out, but I wasn't using pour paints. So this time I actually was using pour paints. So I had one of the really inexpensive, the regular $1.25 foam pumpkins. And then I also had a $3 foam pumpkin. So I took the pour paints and I used them on both of these different pumpkins. Now I did use some Dollar Tree Dixie cups because that seems to work really well to put the different colors of paints in. Then I used a big plastic container that I could actually dump the paints into that would actually collect the paint while I was doing the paint pour. So this was not a really easy project to do. This was probably one of the more challenging ones that I've done because every time I would turn the pumpkin, the paint would just go down like the seams of the pumpkins and I really wanted it to go different directions. I also played around with the different colors that I had. And when I ran out of the pour paint colors, I did use the pour paint medium and added that to some regular acrylic paint. And I tried to stick with the fall colors. I did a lot of gold, a lot of oranges, terracottas, different colors like that. And I'm really happy with how both of these pumpkins turned out. I did use the bigger pumpkin stems that I've been collecting because some of the pumpkin stems that I've had for the different foam pumpkins well, I just collect those when I'm replacing them with a different type of a pumpkin stem. But these pumpkin stems were perfect for this project. And I think this is a great example to show you that yes, you can do the same type of project like a paint pour, but they will never turn out just like the craft that you were inspired by. Now, the next YouTube crafter that I really enjoy watching is Bargain Bethany, number one, she talks so fast. She just gets to it and she tells you exactly what she's doing and all of her projects just work. They work. They're awesome. And I watched her latest fall Dollar Tree craft DIY video and I saw these really adorable caramel apples that she made. There were a couple of other like faux foods that she made as well. And I would really encourage you go check that video out because it's a really good video. But for my craft, I just wanted to focus on the caramel apples. 
Now for her caramel apple, she started painting from the bottom of the apple. Well, for mine, I wanted to paint from the top and have it kind of like drip down onto the apple. So what I did was I took some different paints. I took some different acrylic paints that I had, and then I added some high gloss Mod Podge to the paints. Next, I took that paint and I literally poured it over some Dollar Tree apples. I did do a little bit of painting first, just to get a base coat of the caramel color onto the apples. Then I just opened up that acrylic paint and I literally poured it out, kind of like I did with the pour paint for the pumpkins but I poured it out onto the apples. I wanted to have the different like wavy lines, making it look like it was caramel dripping down from the top of the apple. And while that was wet, I did the next part. And this stuff is so cool. This is actually bedding that you use for small animals, but it really looks like peanuts or a peanut topper that you would use on something like caramel apples. So I took some of that bedding and then I just kind of dropped it down onto the apples and just let it go where it was gonna go. I also did use some Dollar Tree dowels. These are smaller dowels that I cut down to size. So it really does have the appearance of a caramel apple. And I couldn't find a lot of these. So the larger apple is from Dollar Tree and it was $1.25. And then the two smaller apples were also from Dollar Tree, which were $1.25 for both of them. The dowels came from Dollar Tree as well. And the bedding, oh my gosh, I have like a 10 pound bag of this bedding. So I will never have to buy this again. I'm almost thinking I should probably go on Etsy or something. Does anybody need any litter for their animals or their crafts? All right, for this next project, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. You've seen the wooden round signs that you can get at Dollar Tree that they have lots of words and pretty things all over them. Well, I really like those and I want to use the actual sign itself. And I was watching a video by Crafts by Caitlin She's really good too. She's awesome. And she does lots of Dollar Tree crafts, but I was watching her video and I saw how she embellished one of those fall round signs. So I thought, you know what? I have one of those fall round signs. I'm going to do a little embellishing too. And I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to start this off. So I figured I would just do a little bit of painting and just follow. Basically I was coloring in the lines of the leaves and the different elements that were on this sign. And then I wanted to get a little bit 3D, so I added some different flowers. I also added in a couple of pumpkins that I did put little stems back onto. And I just kept adding pieces until it got to the point where I was really happy with how this piece looked. The only thing that I had left to do was to put a bow on it. So I put the bow on it and I made sure that you can still see that I Love Fall is right in the center. I thought about going over the lettering, but in the end I decided I have enough on this round already so I'm not going to do any extra. That is something that would I think look really nice, but I don't quite trust my handwriting enough so I'm just gonna leave this just like it is. One thing that Caitlin did on hers was that she took off the hanger on the top of it and I thought that was a great idea and she just made it so that it could sit anywhere in her house and I was like that is such a good idea. So I had this gold tree from Dollar Tree and I put some E6000 onto the back of it and then I also put some hot glue to give it that instant stick and then I just held it in place for a couple of minutes 
And just like that, I had a, it's not really a hanger, I guess it's a base for my sign. <laughs> And like I say, with all of these projects, I am so happy with how this one turned out. I think it turned out really nice and I'm really happy with it. And I really am looking forward to using it in my fall decorating this year. Okay, for my next craft, I don't know if you've ever seen this crafter before. Her channel is Patty J. Good, and she has a lot of really fun crafts and Dollar Tree crafts. Well, she had this really fun craft and it's called a pumpkin latte. And I really liked how to use the lightweight spackling and make it look like whipped cream. So the secret to it is she had like this little wooden round circle that she put on top of the pumpkins that she was using. Well, I have a lot of pumpkins that need to have a job. So I took a couple of the pumpkins and then I had these little wooden circles. So I took those and I glued those to the top of the pumpkins. Now these pumpkins, I had already removed the stem, so this part was easy. And once I had the wooden round glued in place, then using a Lazy Susan and some lightweight spackling and a star tip for the frosting, I double bagged the frosting, which is the spackling, and then I just moved that around the pumpkin. I didn't have to cut anything out of the pumpkin. I could literally put that little round piece right on top and then just start frosting it. I really think adding in the Lazy Susan to make it easier to move the pumpkin around or whatever it is that you're going to be adding this frosting to, it makes it a lot easier. Then I added some extra embellishments to my whipped cream, including a cinnamon stick and cinnamon. And then I did take some of these little flowers and make them look like sprinkles because I don't have any fall sprinkles. But that is one of the things that I really enjoy about crafting is you just use your brain, get a little bit creative and you can make really fun things like this. Now I still had a big bag of this frosting. So I took some little wooden spoons, put some frosting onto the spoons, put a little bit of cinnamon on there. And then I added some bows from some orange twine. This is almost like jute twine, but it's orange, which is perfect for fall. And I did get that at Hobby Lobby. So that was not a Dollar Tree thing. The pumpkins were all from the Dollar Tree. But again, I had a lot of spackling left in the bag. So I had these little dessert cups and I thought it would be fun to make a little faux dessert. And then I also painted one of the cups. I painted the cup that was going in the middle, this folk art gold. I really like this gold. It's kind of like an antique type of gold color. And then I added the third cup, which has basically just the whipped cream. I had a half of a pumpkin that I put into the bottom. Then I did the whipped cream added some cinnamon and some little adornments, put all of the dessert cups together and I had this cute little dessert. So with all of that frosting that I had in the frosting bag, I was able to make all of these different faux foods. I'm thinking I must have been really hungry when I was doing this video because I've made caramel apples, I've made whipped cream on a spoon, and I've made whipped cream in a pumpkin as Patty J. Good calls it a pumpkin latte. I must be hungry. Now, if you haven't seen any of Canterbury Cottage's videos, oh my gosh, you really need to go check out her channel. She is so creative and she does a lot of crafting with things that she has around the house. She really likes to upcycle and reuse different pieces. Well, she had this really adorable pumpkin wagon that she made. And the first time I saw it, I thought it was a pumpkin planter. Now recently I've seen a lot of crafters using this paint that you add something to it and then it makes, makes it rust. Well, I don't have that, but what I do have is spray paint. And for me, the spray paint works just as good. I had my heart set on, I was going to make a planter. So I took two of these Dollar Tree pumpkins and then I took a Dollar Tree little wooden tote or a little wooden box and I glued those together. Now, at first I thought I was going to try to make this look rusty, but in the end I decided I was gonna 
paint this. I was gonna spray paint it because that's gonna be the easiest thing to do. And once all of the glue had set up, I took it out in the garage and I gave it a couple of coats of the Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Black spray paint that I already had. I really like the spray paint. It goes on very nice and it only took two coats of paint to make this piece look all cohesive and like it was one. And I really like how this looks. I think it looks really nice. But after watching a lot of these different videos, I finally bought some Rub and Buff. Now this stuff is so amazing to work with. I had no idea it was like this. If I would have known this sooner, I would have been using this like a long time ago. And even though this is just a small container of this Rub and Buff, you do not need very much of it. When I was using it, I actually used a little bit too much. So that was kind of wasteful, but what I did was put a little bit of the rub and buff onto one of my paint trays. Then using a chip style paintbrush, I lightly brushed that across the pumpkins. And I really like this look. It's kind of like an antique look, kind of old timey, I guess, but I really like how this turned out. Then I just took some of the flowers that I've been collecting, which seems like forever, and literally made a fall floral arrangement using a couple of things from the Dollar Tree. Everything that I used for this project, I already had, which made it so easy to do. And like all of my other projects, I am so happy with how this one turned out too. Can you see how easy it is to be inspired by watching other crafters craft for themselves? We can always find different ways to redo or reuse or repurpose something from the Dollar Tree. Which brings me to the next video, which is from Whiskey and Wit. And Whitney on <laughs> Whiskey and Wit is so funny. I love her personality. She is so much fun to watch and I just really enjoy the crafts that she does. She took some foam pumpkins and she made them look like the Pottery Barn stone ones. Well, I really wanted to do that and I wanted my pumpkins to have that stone color. However, I had all of this paint left over from the very first project that I shared with you in today's video and that was the pour paint that I used on my foam pumpkins. So what I did was I took all of that paint because it was in a big plastic container and then I just added a bunch of baking soda. I kept adding more baking soda and more baking soda to make it really thick or tried to make it a really thick consistency. Next, I took some foam pumpkins, a whole bunch of foam pumpkins that I had, and using a chip brush, because that's the easiest, I just painted my concoction, my paint, onto my pumpkins. And even though I really wanted these to be that stone color, I decided that I really like this terracotta finish. It's orange, it works for fall, and the pumpkins definitely have texture. And when I look closely at the pumpkins, you can see a little bit of glitter that I used for the pour paint pumpkins. I really like how they turned out. They are so pretty. But one thing I forgot to mention was what I did was I reused different pumpkin stems that I, again, have been collecting. Some of them were the original, some of them were some that I had made, and I just painted the pumpkin stems with that same paint. Then I attached them to the pumpkins with some hot glue, and if there were any gaps between the pumpkin stem and the pumpkin itself, I put a little bit more hot glue so that it would look like it is all one piece because I wanted my pumpkins to look like they were fancy and all one piece the same type of pumpkins that you would probably find at Pottery Barn for a lot more money than what it cost me to make these. And like I said, I really wanted the stone colored pumpkins, but since I didn't have any stone paint and I could not let all of that poor paint go to waste, I think it worked really well for my foam pumpkins. And I still have about a quarter of a jar of that paint left. So I've got to figure out something that I can use this for because I don't want to waste it. And for the last Dollar Tree DIY fall craft, I was inspired by Country Charm by Tracy. She has so many fun videos. Oh my gosh, she is definitely a talented and gifted crafter. But she had taken a Dollar Tree foam pumpkin 
and added in some Dollar Tree ribbon, that black watch plaid, I think it's called. It's like a farmhouse black and white, you know, checkered type ribbon. Well, I happen to have that. So I wanted to make my own pumpkin like this. So what I did was just cut strips of that ribbon. Then using the ribbon that I had already cut out, I just secured that ribbon all the way around the pumpkin. And like I always tell you, when I am doing different ribbon crafts like this with pumpkins, I like to keep the ribbons equal. So what I do on one side, then I do it on the opposite side. That way I make sure that everything is uniform and it's all spaced out evenly. And when I was done with the ribbon, then I came back with one of the pumpkin stems that I had made from earlier projects. And I think I made this to basically show you how to make your own pumpkin stem using different types of rope and different things that you have at home. And I cut it down a little bit so that it would fit to the top of this pumpkin. Then I just took some random floral pieces and stems that I had and I added those to this pumpkin as well. Making pumpkins like this is so much fun because you can truly make an original pumpkin and no two are gonna be alike. It doesn't matter if you use the same type of ribbon or a Dollar Tree pumpkin, you are gonna get different results than anyone else. So what do you think of my projects? I think they turned out really nice. And yes, I was inspired by different YouTube crafters, which I have left links to the videos that had inspired me for my video. So you can see where the inspiration came from. And I'm sure these are not the only crafters that you watch. And I would love to know what YouTube crafters you enjoy watching and who inspires you. Let me know in the comment section down below so I can check them out and be inspired too. And if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell notification. That way you'll get an alert every time I have a new video coming out, which seems to be more and more frequently right now because I have a lot of crafts to do for fall and it's almost time for Christmas. So I really need to like step it up a notch or two and get busy with my crafting. I hope you're getting a jump start on your crafts for fall this year and I hope to see you in the next video.